Driving the new 2022 Defender 110 SEP 300, equipped with 18-inch steel wheels, off-road pack, towing pack, and a range of accessories to aid them in the competition, 80 teams consisting of Land Rover retailer employees competed in the Trek qualifying triumph. This trek included off-road driving events, navigation games, and team challenges. Hey guys, I'm Garrett. I work here at Checkered Flag Jaguar and Land Rover in the sales department. I've been with the company for about two years, and I'm just fortunate that they sent me on this trip with these guys. Had a blast. Uh, best company trip I've been on so far. So I'm Colin, and I'm a technician. I'm actually a team lead, and uh, I've been with JLR for four years, and I've been with Checkered Flag for 17. Uh, it was an honor to do this competition. It's definitely the funnest thing that I've ever done since I've been at Checkered Flag, for sure. Hi, my name is Johnny Landers. Um, been with the company for quite a long time. And uh, first of all, I want to thank Mr. Lee Brooks and uh, Mr. Steve Snyder for allowing us to go on this trip. Hands down, one of the best trips we've done in, in a very long time. It was a great time. Got to go camping, haven't done that in years. I also got to spend some time with my coworkers. Um, we had quite the adventure, got through a lot of things together, but uh, thank you again for the trip. It was awesome. If anybody ever gets a chance to get out there, please do yourself a favor. So it's a great, good time. So Checker Flag gave us the opportunity to participate in the Trek competition for Land Rover. And Lee came up to me one day and said, hey, I signed y'all up. And I thought he was pulling my leg, but he said, no, I'm serious, y'all. Y'all deserve it. And then I found out that uh, Johnny and Garrett were going too, and I was super excited. And uh, basically when the, when the day came, we, we got our rental car, and was it six and a half hour drive? Good, something like that, six, seven hours. Yeah, we, so we split up the drive, and then uh, when we got there, it was you know, the Biltmore Estate, which we had never been to and it was absolutely amazing. Like every bit of that place was just like a picture out of a magazine. So we got all our, you know, all our clothing and everything for, uh, for Trek and then they took us to the campsite where it was about 30, 30 of us had to each build our own tent. That was our first task. And then uh, once we were done with that, they they gave us a, a briefing, a small briefing, and then we uh, we did the flag competition, which before we went, we had to come up with a flag that, what was it, represented the, the region. Region, the company. Yeah, uh, the retailer. Which, uh, Land Rover's uh, mission statement kind of thing. Yeah. As far as you know, what they represent. Um, we put that together pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> And then like the journey to get to Trek and all that. And then, uh, so we did that. And then they gave us a brief on like what we would be doing. They gave us a small map and explained how, so it was set up to where we would basically go find our car in the morning. And then we would go to basically each, uh, each station. There was what, 14 stations. Yep. And so each one had a basically a different, uh, different task that you had to do. Kind of had to give a self rundown on how to use a GPS and locate certain things by GPS on a map. And then uh, that night we slept. It was, it, was pretty, it was a bit chilly. Yeah, yeah, and it got pretty cold out there. So, uh, so yeah, so Lee came and told us we were gonna be going on this uh, Land Rover Trek thing, which I had no idea what he was talking about. I honestly thought it was gonna be like a ride or drive event, <clears throat> you know, for the new model. And uh, so time went on and we got closer to it and then Colin showed me some of the stuff that was going to happen there, and I started getting more concerned because like, there's a lot of physical activity going on. So we get out there, and like Colin said, we got everything set up, the tent and all that. That first morning we get up, and they decide to deck me to be navigator. So the first task was to literally sprint down a hill to pick up your cue cards and sprint back up the hill. And this was at 7 in the morning? <laughs> yeah, 7.15. Like <laughs> and uh, yeah, after that uh, first part, I didn't think I was going to make the rest of the way because it was, uh, was kind of winded. This is Steve Hill. Yeah, it's Steve Hill. But then from there, we got our coordinates, had to find the truck, which that uh, was uh, a bit of an adventure. <laughs> we got ourselves uh, a little lost, uh, found ourselves in a, a, corn, uh, a cow pasture, said hide some cows, got through that, and then uh, finally found the truck. And then from there, it was 
it was literally like a small version of uh, the Amazing Race kind of thing. We uh, got our coordinates and went from each point, and then when we got there, we had to accomplish different tasks to uh, get to the next point. Um, it definitely uh, uh, pushed you as far as uh, really trying to figure out the most efficient way of getting things done. Uh, teamwork was uh, imperative. You couldn't do it by yourself. There's no way. But uh, it was very muddy. But yeah, so we went through the day. We did uh, several different competitions. Um, went through one where we had to take a trailer through uh, uh, basically a loop in the mud and uh, back it back through it and park it. and Without touching any cones. Without touching any cones, which was extremely difficult. Uh, but uh, we managed to get through that one. We actually got through it with only a few seconds left and uh, without any penalties, which was great. Um, from there, we went on to... The bridge. The bridge was the first. The bridge, yeah. The bridge was the first one we did. That was probably... Uh, the fun, most fun one for me, I enjoyed a lot. Basically showed up, there's a gap in the road, water underneath it, and a bunch of plywood piled up, but on it, it had a graphic for the uh, Land Rover logo, so we had to put that together, build the graphic, and make it all work, and then drive the vehicle across the bridge, and then off to the rest of the uh, road. So, uh, once again, lots of teamwork. It took everybody working together and uh, you know, getting through it, but uh, got through that one pretty well. And then, uh, what was the next one after that? Rat Trap. It was rat, rat Trap. trap wasn't yeah, it? that was the worst thing of my life. That was, that was the most frustrating thing ever. Literally, they put us into a cage that was just a circle of, of poles around us, and you had maybe a in foot or two truck. to drive forward and backwards, but you had to go in, turn the truck all the way around, and then drive it back out. Which. And there was only maybe what? A foot and a half of room. Foot on and a half of room, if, if that, not. if that, with the spare tire and everything else. So. Plus mud. Plus mud, and not just mud, but like clay mud. So we were sliding as we were moving. So every time we moved the truck, it was sliding to a new position. So. So then we were going through the woods. Johnny had one of the coolest routes that we were on all day. I think bunch of mud through it, hills, sharp turns, vehicle sliding out. It was great. Uh, then we moved up, and it was a memory game. So in that memory game, what we had to do. We had to, there was a bunch of old cars and we had to match up the name of the cars and then certain features about them. Uh, and then one of the tricky ones was a Velar, which was a prototype Velar. And you know, for the life of me, I was trying to convince these guys that this was a Velar. <laughs> and they eventually were like, all right, we're going with the Velar. And when the lady came back and said that was the Velar prototype, the smile on my face was yep. something that nobody else could probably see. It was awesome. So after that one is when I took the driver's seat. Uh, Colin was nice enough to be like, Garrett, you want to drive? I was like, absolutely. I uh, hopped in and I got lucky enough to have a pretty cool trail myself. Um, mine also had a bunch of mud and hills and turns. Um, we go down to a memory game. It was called Locked In. And they, get, they said, get out of your car. Don't bring anything with you but your navigation tools, which is the GPS they gave us, an old Garmin, probably never used it in my life and a compass and a little map or a cheat sheet is what they yeah. gave us which had coordinates on it uh, so i took first and i went with the little garmin gps and i just ran into the woods and went towards the little checkered flag that it gave us uh, i found a sign on the tree and it said break so i yelled back to these guys i said i got break what do you guys have and they're like, nothing. You know, I get back up there and they're still standing there looking at each other. So I'm like, all right guys, I think we have to go from the middle stake. So we went from the middle stake. Johnny went and found um, a switch, which was on a tree, it said we had, switch. We had to use the compass for that. Yep, and that part was the compass. And the last part was a visual aid. So we had to go find a flag in the, in the woods and Colin found it and it said fuse box. Fuse box. So our three clues were brake switch fuse box and we had no idea what to do from there. So Colin gets out the owner's manual, starts looking at the different uh, fuses, and he finds the brake fuse, which is number 35. Oddly enough, we had a bag in our glove compartment that said 35. Wasn't actually helpful, because we opened up our little lock box, which what the key was for, and it was empty. So we just happened to get the lock box number 35 that also went with brake fuse 35. Uh, so we were kind of spinning our heads for a moment. Then I walk around to the front of the car after Johnny and I were looking in the rear fuse box to the front fuse box and I see this little code that's like L633S or something along those lines. 366. And I just read that out and the, the guide, he says, bingo, that's the code. 
So we really did have to take apart some of the car to find this code or we would have been locked in for an hour. That was pretty cool. Yep. And then after that, uh, I think time was about one o'clock. We had to have be back at camp, have our uh, tents packed up and everything in the car by two. So as a group, we decided, you know, let's probably go back because who knows how long it's going to take us to get these tents in these small bags. So we went back, uh, got our stuff all in, probably about 1.30, took a few cool photos by the cars, and then we were just waiting on everybody else to get back. All right, so one major tool we used was this car button right here, which is our drive mode selector. Uh, from left to right, you have the eco mode, the comfort mode. Uh, you have grass, gravel, and snow mode which was really important on some of the challenges. You know, when you're sliding down a hill, sometimes better to put it in grass, gravel, and snow mode rather than putting it in mud and rut mode. But the next one, we do have mud and rut mode, which is helpful for deep mud, which we were using in the rat trap. Still slipping and sliding a little bit, but that's because our tires were fully caked up with mud and clay. Next one, we have sand mode. We were up in the mountains, so we didn't really use the sand mode much, but I'm sure we could have found a use for it in that day. And then, of course, rock crawl mode. We didn't get the chance to use the rock crawl mode, uh, but what it does, it automatically crawls a little bit for you and will go over the terrains uh, as you need it to. Yeah, I tell you, I was super impressed with how it being handled in the, uh, the rut mode going down through those steps and stuff where you have deep ruts in the mud. I mean, it like you're driving through anything. For, for me, it was after the bridge. That like 45 degree incline with oh, yeah. mud all the way up, I was shocked that it made it up that. Pretty impressive. And yep. they did it no problem. Yep. One other cool feature we have, and we use this quite a lot, so you hit your off-road mode right here in the camera settings, and then you can actually see the front two wheel wells of the car. So when we were doing the tow challenge, we couldn't hit the cones, so I had this up on the screen. That way we could see exactly where the cones were, how much room we had. And one other cool thing, if you are going over some tough terrain. This is a whole frontal view of the car that they use with the generated cameras, which is really cool. And then if you do have anything you are towing, we saw our trailer back here in the tow mode, use the 360 camera, kind of angle the trailer to which way you needed it to go. And then of course all the normal 360 camera modes they have. Of course, we had our phones connected and everything like that too, so if we needed any help with anything, Google was always there. Didn't help, wasn't helpful too much, uh, but it was, it was a blast. Our teamwork between the three of us was awesome. I haven't had the chance to work with these two real close uh, with the problem solving that they deal with daily in the service department, uh, but I had to see it first on and, you know, their communication skills are great. And I just was sitting in the back, just throwing my two cents in when needed. And, you know, we didn't even get lost once in the woods, which was easy to do up there. Uh, we talked to a few teams and they were stuck a few times and, you know, we stuck to our map and communicated between us what we thought was the best route, figured it out, no problem. So my favorite part of the, of the truck is by far the wrap. Uh, it's unique because they only made 70 of them, so if you're driving around on the street with that wrap, then nobody else has. So it has the Trek package on it. Uh, you get a few spare gas cans up here, some awesome lights in the front, um, of course some extra tires, and this special ladder right here, it has Trek embroidered in the side, it's like no other that the Defender can get. Um, Colin, what was the, the company that put this car together called? Uh, Lucky 8 Off-Road. Yeah, so Lucky 8 Off-Road assembled this car. I've been off-roading many times in my life, I've uh, you know, done camping, all kinds of stuff, but Something like this is the most amazing vehicle ever. It's super comfortable. It's got all the technology you would ever want. It really makes it super easy. Um, all you do is just steer, let the car do what it wants to do. But all the gear that's on it comes in function. Like it's amazing how much this thing right here saved us. Right? Like we got stuck, got those off, put them in the right spot, went through it like there's nothing. So I would say other the other thing, my other favorite thing about it is the capability of it. Uh, on the service end, you know, we're always the ones fixing them. We don't ever really get to experience them. So being able to drive it while it's, you know, working properly and having all the extra, you know, check package on it, seeing what it's actually capable of, that, that was probably my favorite part about it. Going up that hill and it making it was, that, that was surprising for me. 
Thank you, Checker Flag. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Thank you, Lee Brooks, for giving us this opportunity. We hope you pick us again next year to do this again so we can represent the company. We promise we'll do a better job. Cheers. So we'll <laughs>